Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back. My name is Chris. And I'm Jose. And we want to welcome you to I Married a Film Snob, where we review films of today and yesteryear. Today's video was made in collaboration with Inspecio Arts Magazine. We'll be reviewing Brandon Cronenberg's Infinity Pool, starring Alexander Skarsgård, Mia Goth, and Cleopatra Coleman. As always, stay tuned until the end to see our readings and be sure to leave a comment down below. Here we go, let's do it. Brandon Cronenberg returns to explore even darker territories than in his prior film Possessor, which by the way, we quite enjoyed, even though it had some minor faults here and there. But in Infinity Pool, his sci-fi conceits take more of a backseat in terms of exploring the grander themes the movie aims to study, primarily hedonism and the trappings of tourist life. Yeah. All the while, Cronenberg uses his visual cinematic flares and inventive cinematography combined with great editing to layer his film with dark pitches in a wholly original way. Now, the film does keep us engaged through a combination of shocking, horrific, and debauched imagery that push the script along, not allowing it to meander or slow down to highlight the in-between-the-lines allegories present throughout. And while it is extreme in its graphic violence and depravity, the film does have subtle layers of bigger ideas that go beyond the visual overload we primarily absorb. Right. It's a fascinating mix between Suspidious visual tones and Oliver Stone's U-turn in exploring the trappings of an outsider, not to mention the nods at Cronenberg's father's work. The premise, James and M. Foster are enjoying an all-inclusive beach vacation in the fictional island of La Tolca, when a fatal accident exposes the resort's perverse subculture and James gets sucked in deeper and deeper into new layers of moral degradation. Now, Brandon Cronenberg does stand on his own as an up-and-coming filmmaker exploring heady issues with strong visuals, but you can definitely see some influence from his illustrious father, David Cronenberg, seep through at points. Mm -hmm. Most particularly is a fascination and fetishism with body horror, mutilation, and decay into sexual depravity. These issues are present many times in his father's work, and most notably, I got inklings of dead ringers with the subject of duplicity, mutilation, and subversive sexuality all thrown into the mix. Mm -hmm. So the apple doesn't fall far from the tree here, and that's mostly a compliment, but there are signs that Brandon has not fully matured into a great filmmaker yet. And the script starts to lose steam towards the end. From the beginning, the film uses inventive cinematography to create a sense of unease. The tilted, twisted, upside down camera movements show an ever present subliminal consciousness of doom, in spite of the polished veneer we see the resort James and M are staying at. Cronenberg then layers a moody soundtrack full of dread to keep our senses heightened at pivotal points. The production design team bring to life the fictional setting of La Tolka in a very convincing way. We get a post-Soviet block feel of a country still stuck some 40 or 50 years ago in style and architecture, adding to the whole feel of the movie and the vibe that the country's moral codes are also behind the times. Mm -hmm. What I can only assume are relocations of old nuclear power plants or factories are used to create a stifling atmosphere with great effect. Yet what stood out most to me was the editing of the film. There are intense moments of hallucinatory revelry with blink too slow and you'll miss it imagery and a fascinating slideshow of mirages that your eye can only absorb so much at once. Right. Even though we get what's going on, while we're trying to peer as hard as possible at the screen to pick up on any overt or subtle images thrown in. It's like a kaleidoscopic right. stream of images where you're just kind of a little overwhelmed, but you get what's going on and... and, and they're very quick, some flashes sometimes, so the editing was very well done for these scenes. The film actually starts with a warning for audiences that could have photosensitive epilepsy. And these dream sequences are quite the trip, aimed at pushing us away while simultaneously growing our sense of wonder. Now, the overall allegorical message the film does push is the hedonistic and uncouth way in which tourists behave when visiting foreign lands. We have personally witnessed this attitude in other people several times on some of our trips and vacations. It's as if once you leave home, you can behave as foolish and as debauched as you wish because you're a tourist, so you get a pass. And the things and behaviors you would never do at home become a free-for-all for disrespectfulness and drunkenness. Almost like a what happens in Vegas kind yeah. of deal. This is especially augmented when tourists visit developing nations, as in the case of this film. James, Gabby, her husband Alban, and his whole crew personify the obnoxious tourists who don't observe or respect any of the local customs and instead think because they have the means to pay for everything, the rules don't apply to them. Right. The movie plays with that whole conceit very well that, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can't just act like an arrogant or over-the-top tourist acting like a fool. Right. Just because, you know, you can. It's, a straight-up fool. Yeah. yeah. And the consequences, the moral 
physical and mental consequences that come with that. So The setting of the film mostly takes place in an insulated and walled in resort with all the lush amenities you could want, which is simultaneously also completely detached from any of the harsh realities of poverty and the dire conditions the rest of the country is facing. And this metaphor of social dichotomy is what's strongest about the film and not any of the characters declines or growths or tribulations. Right, I agree. It's the out-of-place supplantation of a completely foreign entity, whether the resort itself or the tourists that occupy it, into a place where it doesn't belong and is out of pace with the local norms. Yeah, it's that duality of this lush resort with all the amenities and total, you know, five-star. Very star, modern, yeah. With the rest of the country where that it occupies, that it's you know, a little bit more rustic, a little bit more old school. Yeah. And it's moral codes and the way they do things. So it's, it. the movie is playing that with the resorts itself and the tourists that go in and out that they're, they're totally out of place. Yeah. It's like you put a foreign entity into this place that it doesn't belong and something is going to come from that. Oh, yeah. The film in the same way also slightly pokes fun at how in many developing nations, police corruption is rampant. And as long as you funnel some money to the right pockets, you can get away with anything. Unfortunately. Knowing there will be no consequences. No. But for a significant sum, we'll build a double to stand in for your execution. And this ties into the second allegory of the film, which is that once you know there will be no consequences to your actions, how willing are you to hold on to or let go of your own moral compass and fall into depravity? Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, you know, most of the film is very horrific, but... That little thing about police corruption is very kind of tongue in cheek, very yeah. darkly comic. So it has does have that little darkly comic tinge in that aspect of the movie. And James knows that no matter what he does, he will not face punishment. Instead, his double will have to pay the price. And so watching yourself die, it becomes like a reincarnation of sorts and in which you're free to do as you please with no attachments with ever increasing levels of wanting to push the limits. Yeah, each time he watches himself die, his level of extremity, like he wants to push things and the whole crew want to push things even, even further. further each time yeah. because there's no limits now. You yeah. know, there's no punishment. So The film and the script smartly do not focus too much on the sci-fi angle or machinations of how you create an exact body double to atone and pay for your sins. Be executed in your name, and all for a handsome payment. Right. In this way, the film becomes more allegorical, operating in a similar world to ours, but not one completely grounded in reality. So the movie then has a little bit more leverage to get away with more of the wild conceits it tries to push. And this disconnects us from a familiar reality and also allows Cronenberg to hide some of the faults of the movie because we understand that the world the movie occupies doesn't operate in a grounded experience. Now, we also liked how the film doesn't veer into the direction you think it's going to go. Instead, it swerves into new directions. Like, when you think it'll dwell into the exploration of which version, the original or the double, is really the real person, it acknowledges it quickly and moves on to different areas. Yeah, you think, oh, this whole thing is going to turn into, did they really kill the double? Right. Or did they kill the original? And then it doesn't even go in that direction. You think it's going to go in that direction, but it's, you know... Yeah, it, it doesn't, it almost doesn't, like, waste time in that Yeah, sense. I think one of the characters mentions it, like, as a bad joke or something, and then, you know, oh, yeah, no, it moves on, so, I right. thought, you know... You think it's going that it kind of throws you into a loop. I like that. Yeah. Yet the most glaring negative of the film is the character development. Skarsgård is okay as usual, but we really don't have any reason to connect with this character, James. True. Or actually care about his moral downfall. He is kind of blasé, not only about his writer's block, but also life in general. So his floating around makes it hard for us to engage with him as a character. Goth's Gabby is the most fun to watch as a character because of her acting, but again, we don't really get a sense of what motivates her, her actions, or the character in general, other than just a push towards extremism for the sake of it. So, while visually engaging, the film does falter in creating characters we want to invest in. Yeah. Cronenberg's stylistic flares help to hide this fault, but in the end, there needed to be a deeper focus into the why of the characters, and that's barely yeah, touched, barely on. touched on. It's barely touched on. We don't know what is the deeper motivation of these characters and you right. know you always they always talk about motivation with characters but it's it's they're kind of these characters that are floating and you don't know what is driving this hedonism are they discontent with life are they just you know, morally corrupt what what yeah. is why yeah there wasn't an inkling of a detail in the film so it's it's kind of like the facade of characters that cover different or things but they're not developed or, or given a convincing reason why they're willing to go through this why they're 
they are the way they are. So it's right. just kind of visual flares with these kind of underwritten characters. Now, in an attempt to explain the ending, in spite of all the craziness, misery, and pain that James has endured, he decides to stay at the resort and not return home, even though he's alone at the resort um, because it's closed for the rainy season. Yeah, he's when you see that last shot, of, you know he's going to go back when he's there at the airport kind of thinking. Right. And then he goes back and it's just him alone in this resort. So. Yeah, with this pouring rain. And it's a great visual. <laughs> yeah, which ties into how in symbolic fashion, Cronenberg is exploring how when we visit a place, a part of us and our actions remain there in that place. Right. Even after we go home. A sort of essence always lingers and possibly even stays in that foreign location. James's actions and how far he has pushed the envelope of his own morality make him realize there's no going back home to a normal life. Right. That's it. He, he crossed a certain line that now there's no there's walking no back. There's no going yet. back. He has no choice but to try to stay to come to grips with who he is now. Changed and marked for life. Well, at least he has some new material for his new novel. Yeah, that little novel he's been working on for seven years or something. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Got something to write about now. Yeah, he definitely has material now to motivate something. All right, so now for ratings of the film. What would you give it? Probably give it a 6 out of 10. You know, I enjoyed the movie, but um, I think Cronenberg is still finding his voice. He's just very skilled as a filmmaker visually. Mm -hmm. Visually, the movie is great, uh, inventive. Um, yeah, but, the compositions were wonderful. Yeah, the twisted angles, the cinematography, the production design, yeah. the costumes. Yeah, production design was on point. Yeah, they, Those, I'm sure it was the Hungarian Hungarian locations. and Croatian locations were, were great. Oh, yeah. Um, so that all works. So the visuals are there. The music is there. It's, again, a little bit the script needs need to work on, and especially in the character developments. Just so, a little bit, though. So we can actually care about yeah. James or M. Like, why? Why are we engaging with them? Um, aside from, you know, just Skarsgård being a good-looking actor, like, we have no reason to really connect. Right. Um, or feel this moral decay he's going through. So I think if the script would have focused more on that, and then you had all these amazing visuals, it would have been even better. True. I think last thing, like I mentioned earlier, the editing of the film the, with these very intense flashing sequences, uh, sequences of dreams and uh, half drugged out states are very well done, uh, very visually impactful. And they're almost come at you a little too fast for you to be able to pick up, but I think it's intentional and it does what, you know, convey what the characters are going through. So mm -hmm. um, I think, I, I hope. Um, Cronenberg continues to make films because I think he's a good young director that in spite of his father's shadow is making really good films and even though that same father's shadow is seeping subversively into some of the material he's, yeah, he's it's drawn a, to cover it's a similar feel I think yeah very you know um, depraved sexuality body horror violence you know I like that he likes to use um practical effects not uh cgi and then you see this bloody kind of gory beating, scenes yeah. like, they're very intense and, yeah. and i think again that's maybe from his father but overall it's good but it could have been better so how about yourself okay. what would you rate it so i'd probably give it a little bit higher than you just because i disagreed a little bit in that it did deserve i would say a 7.5 maybe even an 8 um because the cinematography was great. Production design was great. Um, the writing did le need a little bit more substance. Um, With the characters. Yeah. Not the story. Right. That's, that's the distinction. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, the acting was great. Mia Goth did phenomenal. She killed it. She killed She's it. I mean, great, yeah. screaming outside of that bus. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> screaming for Jamesy <laughs> was awesome. <laughs> Jamesy! Yeah, she was she plays that demented oh, thing. For that me. just like irritating person. Yeah. Anyway, so I think it was a, a decent film for 2023. I mean, we're That's off a good, to a great start here. It's a good way to start the year. Yeah. Um, so. And Cronenberg also, he is sl a little by little following into his dad's footsteps, but I think he's doing a great job. Yeah, so. He has his own groove, you know, yeah. but there is like a layered thing there of some of his father's for thing, sure but. for sure you could totally pick it up right away 
So yeah. It shows a sign of a greater filmmaker yet to come. Yes. He's not there yet, but there are all the flags that he's going to continue making even better films. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to his next one. Yeah. Overall, yeah, not bad. Yeah. Overall, highly recommend, right? So, so recommend. All right. <laughs> highly recommend from me. So, so from him. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more Film Snob reviews.